Welcome back guys. Uh, today we are going to be taking a look at the M1903 30-06 bolt action rifle. The uh, 1903 served as the standard infantry rifle for the U.S. Army from June 19th, 1903 until it was eventually replaced by the semi-automatic uh, M1 Garand in 1936. There were two main manufacturers of these rifles being obviously the Springfield Armory and the Rock Island Arsenal. Uh, this particular rifle here is made by Rock Island Arsenal, and according to the serial number, it was originally made in 1909. Um, this gun is a bolt action, which that means every time you want to fire a shot, you would have to ma manipulate the bolt back and then bring it forward to fire. Um, this, like I said, fires a 30 6 which is this round here and it has an internal five round box magazine which means that the magazine does not detach it's all inside of here with a little spring loaded guy right there so traditionally you'd have a cartridge belt um, and they would be five rounds on a stripper clip and the stripper clip if you see this little cutout right there in that top of the receiver you would pull out your five round stripper clip you would insert the stripper clip there and then you would just push all five rounds right right into that internal box magazine. And then, like I said, you'd be all set to put your bolt forward and good to go. So upon our entry into World War I, uh, we had produced roughly 840 something thousand 1903 rifles between Springfield Armory and Rock Island Arsenal. And uh, some of those pre-war production um, rifles are what we now call, as collectors, a low serial number uh, rifle. And we're, you guys might know um, to look out for those. Uh, don't buy them. Or if you do buy them, don't shoot them because they can potentially be dangerous. Um, and the reasoning for that was a lot of those, not a lot, but a handful of those pre-war um, rifles they, uh, the receivers were constructed with a single heat treated case hardened steel, which was proper, improperly um, subjected to excessive temperatures during that forging process. And that could cause the carbon to be burnt out of the steel, which would uh, end up leaving a very brittle receiver. And there was definitely a, a little bit of evidence to show that um, some of those early rifles were improperly forged in the the cases the failure were pretty rare but there were still a few uh, some caused serious injury but there as far as i know there was no reported deaths from the u.s army um and there was a couple of issues where they were potentially using the wrong cartridge and whatnot but um all that to be said um as a collector if you do find a 1903 Kind of do your research and make sure uh, if you're going to fire it, it's not a low serial number. So they kind of, from my understanding, they figured that out and kind of redid the process and did a double heat treat and whatnot on uh, right around serial number 800,000 for the Springfield Armory rifles and right around 285,000 for the Rock Island Arsenals. Um, so this one being a Rock Island Arsenal rifle, the uh, serial number is 371 plus thousand so this is safe to fire uh, according to the research that I have looked into and done and I've only shot it one time uh, and I had zero issues with it but this that definitely not something I'll take to the range all the time but it is uh, definitely one I will shoot from time to time uh, especially just because of the condition it's in anyways so now even though this was one of our main battle rifles uh, during World War one uh, from what I've understood the uh, 1917 Enfield actually did see a little bit more action than the 1903s but that being said this obviously saw action throughout World War one and even though it was officially replaced in 1936 um, when we kind of found ourselves entering into World War two just like I had talked about with the 1911s and the 1917 revolvers, we kind of found ourselves uh, underprepared and not having enough M1 Grands to uh, supply the entire military. So we kind of either refurbished a lot of the 1903s that saw action in World War I. Um, they went through an arsenal rebuild, rebarreled, restocked. Or we started making um, a couple different variations of the 1903, such as like the 1903A3, which was uh, produced between 1942 uh, to 1944. 
and some of the major differences uh, between you know the A3 and this rifle is that um, you see these sights here. I mean, both of them had a front blade sli blade sight like this, but then the, the original 1903s had what people refer to as a leaf sight, which is adjustable here and here. It's very similar to like the sight on the K98. And then the A3s, what they did was they removed this and on the receiver right here, they tacked on a uh, more like a flip up peep sight, uh, kind of like what you would find on an M1 Grand or an M1 Carbine. Um, so that was like one of the main differences. And then also they kind of found them replacing a lot of milled parts with stamped parts. And that's kind of like when they stopped and were like, well, we're replacing enough stuff on this to where we should redesignate it to the uh, M1903 A3. And so, you know, between the re-arsenaled uh, 1903s and the A3s, those saw a little bit of service during World War II, uh, mostly as designated sniper rifles, also saw a little bit of service in the Korean War and in the Vietnam War, like I said, mostly as sniper rifles from, from then on. Um, a lot of the O3s got replaced during World War II as soon as the M1 Grand production kind of caught up. Um, another uh, way to tell if you have a, a really, really quick, besides that peep sight, um, quick way to tell if it's been re-arsenaled or if it's an A3 is the stock style. So now this is not an original World War I stock, unfortunately. It has been replaced at some point. This uh, rifle has been gone through an arsenal rebuild. So this, I believe, is called a Style C stock, where it actually kind of has a little bit of a pistol grip. The original stocks just went straight back into this. There was they didn't have that little bit of a, a grip, which honestly, my hands aren't very big, and even for me, that I can get about two fingers on that grip. It's not the most comfortable. Um, I prefer, I would like to have the original stock, but this stock also has a little bit of history with it as well, so I'm not gonna end up replacing it. I'm gonna keep this rifle just how it is. Now, I acquired this rifle from a good friend of mine's father. Um, his father was a huge collector back home, and um, he had passed away probably in the early uh, 90s, uh, from what I understand. And um, he told me that uh, they sold off a huge chunk of his collection when he had originally passed, and he had, he had kept a handful of things. And uh, my buddy gave me a call and told me that you know, a little bit before I moved out of New York, uh, he told me that his dad was getting ready to put the rest of his grandfather's collection uh, up to auction. So if I wanted to take a look at anything, come down and, and take a look. And there's a few items I'd really wanted, but this one was a bucket list item of mine for a long time. So I ended up buying this maybe like a week before I moved. Uh, so I lucked out on that. Uh, he didn't know anything about it besides that, you know, um, his father had it for about 40 years or so before he had died in the 90s. And he had said that he saw his dad shoot it maybe five times total uh, as a kid. And that uh, from what he was told was that when his when his dad acquired it, it was still in Cosmoline and, and packaged up and whatnot. So that's all the information he could give me. So after I did a little bit of my own research with a few of the stamps on the rifle, um, I was able to kind of put together a little history and I, I ended up telling him and he thought that was really darn cool. And uh, so yeah, I'll show you guys a closer look at some of the stamps on here. Now, as I mentioned um, here, we've got U.S. Rock Island Arsenal model 1903, 371,000 for the serial number. And then, uh, so what I was able to find out is that this was definitely re-arsenaled or rebuilt at the San Antonio Arsenal or Armory. I can't remember off the top of my head, but you see the little SAA stamp there with a little kind of rectangle around it. Um, so that was re, so they put a new stock on it. They rebarreled it, um, probably reblued it. And uh, as, I mean, as you can tell, this rifle's in gorgeous condition. There's a little, little bit of wear here on the bolt. But other than that, this thing is in mint condition. Um, you've got two little proof markings here, which I don't know why there's two. Traditionally, you'll only find one, even on a rebuilt rifle. Uh, since this is a, a different stock that's been put on it, you'll still traditionally only find one. 
but you can see there's a P inside of a circle and then a P inside of a square. Um, and then also, like I had mentioned earlier, the stock itself is a replacement. And so it's not, it, this is that style C or type C stock that's got that little bit of a pistol grip on it. It doesn't have the finger grooves that a lot of the World War I actual, you know, battle stocks would have had. There's a big old finger groove that goes right there. And then in addition to that, this rifle has a new-ish barrel put into it. Let's see if we can focus here. HS with a little ordnance flaming bomb, a 944, which would mean that this barrel was made in September of 44. So my guess would be that it was also probably rebuilt in uh, September of 44 at the San Antonio Arsenal. So that kind of wraps up this little video about my uh, Rock Island Arsenal M1903. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it at least a little bit of informative. Um, until next time, be good.